Okay, so we're at a point here where we can um, start thinking about um, installing the frets. And before we do that though, um, we need to make sure that all of these fret slots are completely clean and uh, they're at the proper depth. So um, what we're going to do uh, to clean it out is we're going to use this, it's just like a little clean out tool. Uh, you can also use it to deepen the fret slots um, in a pinch if you've already got the binding installed and you find they're not deep enough. Uh, you can use this to, you know, kind of hone hone your slot to get it exactly as deep as you need it in all places. And uh, to check the depth, we're going to be using this thing here. This is just a depth gauge. Um, so we've measured the uh, fret tang against here, and the fret tang goes. I don't know if you can see that. And there's two lines on there. The fret tang goes right up to the bottom of that second line. So we got to make sure that when we stick this in the slot that it goes down uh, right to that second line. So find a radius here. We got a 16 inch radius and the side is 15 to 20. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to first check it, see where we're at with it. Uh, get some light on here. This thing can be tough to read sometimes. There we go. And we're looking pretty good all the way. But what we're going to do is we're going to make sure um, that this entire slot is clean because up here in the edges, um, when we put the binding on, some of the adhesive uh, has made its way into all of the slots here. So we're just going to make sure those corners are nice and clean. And uh, we're just going to carefully work at it, um, being extra careful not to slip out and mar your fretboard at this point. Because we got it, uh, we don't want to be messing with this thing anymore. Um, once we get uh, get these slots deep and get these slots on, we want this to be a fish, finished board. So um, you can see this this tool here too. It's got two two sides to it, um, so you can get into both corners type of deal, and you don't have to swing the instrument around to uh, do the other side of the cut. So it's kind of handy, and it's got nice aggressive teeth on it too, so it works pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna carefully. Just set it down in our uh, fret slot here, and you can see the area right at the end here that is just got some adhesive in it. So I'm just going to keep nipping down on it and kind of pulling away. And uh, it shouldn't take much to clean it out. That looks pretty good there. Maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, that looks good there. And we'll spin the tool around. We'll just check this corner. It looks like we're we're pretty good to go in this corner. I don't think we got any adhesive squeeze out there. So we'll take our uh, take our measuring tool here. Yeah, we're looking pretty good. Seems to be kind of a hump or something in the middle. I don't know if that's maybe just some of the material that I just cleaned away there. But, uh, Keeping that a little bit right in the center here. Yeah, I think there was just a little piece of crud in there. That's perfect. Okay, so we got a, uh, that's one down. We got another 26 to go. So we're just going to work away at this. And, um, you know, the, the three main tools you need for this is, of course, this, um, this cleaning tool here. Uh, something to check your depth with. If you don't have one of these, you can use, um, you can use a business card or something and just line up the tang of the fret on the business card and uh, mark it with a, a black pen or whatever and then uh, you know make and then use that card uh, make sure you get the depth up to that pen line uh, so, you know same deal it's just uh, that's what I did before I actually bought this so works just as well okay so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna do uh, the rest of these uh, frets get them done and then um, oh our third tool, most important of all, is a vacuum. Because uh, once you get these cleaned out, you want to vacuum them. And then you want to check the depth again and make sure. Um, and before you take away any material other than uh, glue squeeze out and stuff like that, um, you know, just make sure that all the stuff's cleaned out um, while you're checking your depth so that you get an accurate reading. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and finish that and then we'll get into uh, cutting the slots to size, or cutting the frets to size, sorry. Okay, so on to the bending the uh, fret wire. Uh, like I said, there's different ways to do this, uh, some easier than others. 
Uh, I used to just bend this stuff by hand and just kind of, uh, I had a radiusing kind of guide that I would bend it a little bit, put it up against the guide, see what it needed and kind of tweak it. And, uh, and as you can imagine, that took a really long time. Uh, I wanted to find a way to be able to radius this stuff and uh, keep a consistent radius on it and uh, kind of speed up the process as well. So uh, I made this little contraption here. Uh, you can find plans for it on the, on the web and stuff or you can actually buy ones um, from some of the luthier um, supply shops. But um, all it is is it's pretty simple. Uh, I just made uh, like a round wheel and then uh, I cut a slot into it. So what I did is I got this piece here and I got it cut to almost round and I chucked it up in the drill. And then um, using a chisel, I uh, just got it rounded uh, completely perfect. And then I took a, uh, I believe it was a hacksaw of all things, and I just rested the blade along here while it was, uh, while it was in the drill press spinning. And it created a nice channel that's just the perfect width for the tang of the fret. Uh, okay, so I got that attached there and I attached the handle onto it as well. And I got these two little rollers, they're just off of a patio door. And I have one installed just with, with a hole, and I have another one installed and it's installed with a slot going through this piece here so that it's adjustable up and down. And that will give us our different radiuses. Um, I've got this thing locked down to uh, 16 inches. Well, I got it locked down to a little bit, a little bit um, tighter than that, and there's a reason why. Um, if, you, if you're doing a neck that's 16 inch radius fretboard, then uh, you want to make the, uh, the radius a little bit uh, tighter than that. So you want to make it so uh, it's kind of over bent. And the reason why is because, um, you know, through weather change and stuff like that, if these frets ever did want to pop out anywhere or, or have a, a pop up somewhere, it's usually going to happen on the ends of the fret. So what this does, if we over bend it and uh, we set the, the fret in the position, when we press it in, um, the, the ends will go into the slot first and then as the center goes in it will actually push push the um, the ends of the fret kind of out and kind of spread them out and it, and it kind of locks the ends into position um, so it, they're not just uh, being sunken into the slot they're being sunken in and then kind of being spread out so uh, it really locks the ends in there and uh, you usually I've, I've never seen um, any builder who uses that technique, I've never seen them have a fret uh, ever pop out on them. So uh, it's a really good technique to just, and it, all it takes is just, you know, over bending your, your fret wire a little bit. Just a little step like that can really make a big difference. Okay, so anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our fret wire here. This is wide, highest fret wire, I believe, uh, from Stumac. Uh, so it's jumbo fret wire, and it's um, it's the pretty much the highest you can get. So this will allow for, you know, um, a lot of fret levelings down the road, probably two or three, depending on um, how deep the uh, the wear is on on the um, on the frets. But uh, yeah, so I always tend to use the uh, deepest stuff I can. So you want to take it and you want to kind of hold it upside down so the tang is sitting up, and the tang is just going to you just want to make sure that that gets into this slot here on this wheel looks like we're in there right there okay so then what you want to do is you want to feed the fret wire until it gets to this other roller and then you want to take the roller and just manually kind of help it along to get up there and that will start your radius okay now once you got it to that point it's just a matter of cranking it just crank it until it comes all the way through and there you go it's nicely radiused. Um, we're going to check that up against our fretboard and it looks like it's just a little bit deeper than it needs to be. Yeah, that's perfect. It's sticking up maybe about a sixteenth of an inch in the center whenever I uh, line it up to the fretboard. So that's, uh, that's perfect. Okay, so we're going to need a couple lengths of this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to radius uh, three lengths. And um, You see how quick that was? Uh, it literally took me you know, to stick the fret in there and actually turn the crank, it literally took me 10 seconds. That would usually take me about 10 minutes anyways. And it, I wouldn't have a nice consistent radius like that either. It would be, uh, you know, a little bit flat in some areas and stuff. And I would have to fix that up through leveling and stuff. This way it also, uh, you know, this is good for that too. It kind of helps you with leveling. You don't have to level as aggressively usually. Um, the radius on every fret is going to match one another. Okay, so get it started in there. 
And then we're just gonna twist away. Kind of fun actually. Okay, and we'll do one more. Because this is a 27 fretter. And uh, well usually a 24 fretter takes just over two lengths I find anyway, so. Okay, so make sure that's lined up in our lined up in our slot there on our wheel. Yep. Get it started. And then crank it through. Okay. Here's all our fret wire. Radius. Ready to go. Handy little too. Okay, so now we're going to go on to uh, cut them to size. We're going to grab a uh, pair of, uh, of uh, fret nippers. And we're just going to cut these um, with about one eighth of an inch overhanging each side of the, the fretboard. Uh, we'll go back and we'll nip that off later after we get them installed. But we've also have, have binding on here, so we're going to have to notch out the, uh, the ends of the tang. And uh, we've got another special tool for that. But we're going to grab the, um, the nippers first. We're going to cut these all to size and lay them all out um, from shortest to longest. And then uh, we'll get on to that process of uh, nipping the tanks. Okay, so we've got all these slot or these uh, frets cut, uh, just about an eighth of an inch over on each side here. And so what we're going to do is we need to cut a little notch out of uh, the tang on each end here. And uh, I've got a tool that's going to do that for us uh, right here. <clears throat> and it's pretty simple to use this tool. Uh, it's got a little slot right here that the uh, the crown of the of the fret goes into, and it's got a little cutter right here. You get it lined up to where you want it, and then you just squeeze it, and the cutter shears off that piece of the uh, tang. But we need to mark where we're going to cut first, so we're going to line this up here, pretty much centered. Doesn't have to be perfect as long as you have overhang on both sides. It's what what's important, but the uh, more centered you are the easier your life's going to be. Now what you want to do is you want to make a mark on the tang here and you want to bring it in um, about a 32nd of an inch past the binding because like we said earlier when these things get pressed in and the center gets pressed in and pushes these ends out we want to make sure that we have clearance here so that uh, you know it, it's got enough clearance to push so that the middle push is flat because if this is being stopped by the binding, then the middle won't push in all the way, and then uh, we'll have a whole different problem. So we'll line that up, get it right to where about we want. Just gonna make a mark there, make a mark here. Now, because of the way this tool works, we're gonna have to transfer these marks or one of these marks over to the other side. So we'll do that right now. Okay, so now we want to take our tool here and we want to line up that mark that we just made right to the cutter here. Looks like right about there, so give it a squeeze. And yeah, that's perfect. Now you can see what we've got here now. So it took a uh, Nice notch out of there, nice and straight. Uh, it leaves a little bit of a burr on the back side of the, or on the underside of the crown there, and we're just going to clean that up with a little, uh, a little uh, file, a little flat file, and just uh, clean it up till we get, uh, just to take that little bit, bit of a burr off, because that will interfere with the, the fret setting down nice and tight to the, the fretboard. Okay, so we do the same on the other side here. Get it lined up. There we go. And then after you get both cut, you just want to check it with your fret slot, and we're looking perfect there. So we'll put that back in line. We want to keep these frets um, organized from uh, longest to shortest here at all times so that we know um, we know which fret goes where. Okay, so that's all we're going to do there. Uh, we'll get all these cut out, and then uh, we'll come back and I'll show you how to file that little burr off there and get it just right. And then uh, we can go ahead and start pressing these things in. Okay, so I've got all these uh, 
these tangs notched out for the to take the binding here and uh, you can see there's still just a little bit of a burr left on the inner side here we got to get rid of that because um, if we don't then this portion of the fret is not going to sit flat on the fretboard all we're going to do is take a couple strokes and check our progress we want to make sure that we're just taking the burr off and we're not starting to dig into uh, these outside edges of the actual crown here just because then that's going to change the shape and it's not going to be flat on the bottom and you're going to end up with a little bit of a a gap there between the fretboard and the fret. And doesn't take a whole lot. We're almost there now. That's good right there. Let me a little more. There, that's perfect right there. So now uh, I don't know if you can see, but the burr is gone, and you'll be able to tell because you'll see the tool marks, and they'll be running right. Um, they'll be. You'll be able to see the tool marks consistently, like on this entire part of the fret here. That way you know that that burr is gone and you're completely flat. So we'll spin this one around, do the other side, and we'll do that uh, 26 more times and then uh, we'll be ready to actually install these into the board.